January 7th, 2015. Police receive a call requesting that a welfare check be carried out on a 26-year-old mother of two, Erica Cripping Crosby. Her seven-year-old girl Amira had not been met out of school and Erica was always prompt in the playground to pick her up. Everybody was in agreement that her not showing up was alarming. Something was very wrong and the search for Erica was now on. Just 24 hours after the search had started, the missing persons case would quickly turn into a homicide investigation. Twenty-six-year-old Erica Crippen Crosby lived in Mount Laurel with her family. After losing her mother when she was 13, her two aunts had raised her, and the three of them were extremely close. Family was everything to Erica, and everybody said that being a mother was her favourite thing in the whole world. She had a daughter, Amira, from a past relationship of almost a decade, and a three-month-old baby girl, Kaylee, with her new husband, Kyle Crosby. Erica's family said that Kyle loved Amira like she was his own, and the family dynamic seemed perfect. Erica's friends said that she was funny, animated, smart and sassy, exaggerating everything she did and making jokes at her own expense, just to make everyone laugh. She loved to entertain and be social, but she also enjoyed quiet nights in with her young daughters. As well as being a busy mother, she was working hard on achieving her dream of becoming a doctor, as well as working in a hospice caring for people. She was always on the go, never slowing down and always pushing and challenging herself. Erica and her husband of almost a year, Kyle, had actually known each other since school, but started speaking properly years later in 2012. He reached out to her on Facebook and the spark was instant. Erica said she loved his ambition. When they started dating, he was really driven and hard-working, and this matched her personality well. He was the founder of a fitness company, and the pair loved working out together. Two years after meeting, they married and moved into a new apartment. Erica soon found out she was pregnant with twins, and the pair were over the moon. Erica's uncle said, the white picket fence and the puppy, that's all they were missing. Tragically, however, one of the twins didn't survive, but little Kaylee did, and Erica called her her miracle princess. Several months would pass, and the cracks were beginning to show in the couple's relationship. Erica and Kyle were definitely not without their issues. Kyle had started using a lot of drugs and would disappear frequently, Erica was forever trying to get him to stop and be present with his family, but the minute things seemed to get better, they would go back to how they were shortly after. The police had been called to the house several times for domestic disturbances, but it had never gone any further in the way of charges. Erica eventually put her savings towards paying for rehab for him, and everyone said that although she was trying her best to help and get their family back to how it was, She was mentally and physically exhausted. December 30th, 2014 Erica had a tradition that New Year's Eve was always spent with her girls, so Kyle and Erica decided to go out and celebrate the night before, having a nice meal and some drinks. Erica documented everything about her life online, and at around 11pm, she uploaded a photo of the couple to Facebook, and set it as her profile picture. They were smiling and happy, enjoying their evening together. The next day, on what was New Year's Eve, Erica's aunt Sonia answered the phone to Kyle. He told her that Erica was going out again, and he asked if she could help watch the children. 
She said this was strange, knowing it was Erica's tradition to spend the evening in with her family, and everyone she would normally have gone out with hadn't heard from her. Kyle phoned back later, saying that everything was fine, and she didn't need to come over anymore. Several hours passed, and Erica's uncle got another call from Kyle. Kyle said he was getting worried, as he had phoned Erica several times, but was getting no answer. Her family started trying to call her too, but they were also met with silence. The hours ticked by into New Year's Day, and when her aunts got no text or call from Erica to wish them a happy new year, they knew something was wrong. January 2nd, 2015 Kyle posted a status to Facebook, asking if someone could look after the girls. Surprisingly, Erica's family then received a couple of texts from Erica's phone, but something about them didn't sit right with them. They all had an instant uneasy feeling, as the messages did not read or sound like her at all. She was still not answering her phone when it rang, and her social media was a ghost town. She posted every single day, without fail, where she was, what she was doing, and tagging who she was with. Everything from her daily workouts and how many assignments she had to do, to her late night snacks. But since her post a day before New Year's Eve, there was no activity whatsoever. When Amira wasn't collected from school and the police were called to do a welfare check, everybody felt sick to their stomachs. On January 7th, when officers arrived at the couple's apartment, they found baby Kaylee alone in the bathtub, fully clothed in a soiled diaper. Police immediately suspected there was improper childcare going on. Family members then turned up at the apartment too, and said that it was in total disarray. There was a smashed window and broken glass on the floor. Food and rubbish scattered around, furniture was overturned, and everything was everywhere. Erica's purse and keys were still inside, and despite the freezing cold temperatures, her coats were all there too. Everybody said she would have been horrified at the state of her home. There was no way she would walk away from the children and not a chance that she would leave them in an apartment like that. Kyle was sat on a chair and he appeared to be high on something. Given the state of the home and little Kaylee in the bathtub, the police asked Kyle to come in and make a statement. Amira's father, Hermine, came and picked her up and Kaylee was taken in by Kyle's mum, Jo. Hermine said that Amira was very smart and perceptive, and it was heartbreaking to know that she knew something bad had happened to her mother, but, the same as everyone else, she had no idea what. At the police station, Kyle wasn't really making any sense, and told officers that he had taken some painkillers. He told them he hadn't actually seen his wife since New Year's Day. He'd tried to get in contact with her, but to no avail and he had no idea where she might be. He filed a missing persons report, and the search got underway. The young mother of two from South Jersey has been missing since December 30th. She was last seen with her husband at a restaurant and bar in Cherry Hill. Action News reporter David Henry has the latest. Yeah, her 26-year-old Erica Crippen Crosby lived here with her husband, Kyle Crosby, and her two daughters. She has not been seen since just before New Year's Eve. We're just trying to get Erica back home. That's what we know. Like, this is too much. Too much. Erica was last seen with Kyle Crosby at this pub in Cherry Hill the night of December 30th. She posted a profile update on her Facebook page later that night, and that's her last post. Previously, she posted just about every day, several times a day. That's when the family reported her missing. They say she would never leave her kids behind if she up and left. She would never do that to her own children. She would never. We're worried. We, 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 wherever she at, come home. Let us know something. Anybody that knows something, let us know. I mean, we're very sick here. Tonight, loved ones gathered outside of Erica's apartment in Mount Laurel to pass out flyers and to pray for her safe return. We need Erica to come home safe to us right now, Father God. It's not like Erica to just walk out the house. 
and leave her kids. She loved her kids. Erica's family believes something is terribly wrong. As well as the detectives, Erica's family and friends were conducting their own investigation. In the harshest and coldest conditions, and through all hours of the day and night, they looked for her. Her best friend even quit her job so she could spend every day searching for her. Given everything that they knew about Erica, her constant communication, her presence as a loving mother, her social media updates, and her keys and purse being at home, authorities informed the family that things had escalated fast and they were now treating her case as a homicide. A few days later, police returned to the couple's apartment and realised that Kyle was gone, and so was Erica's Ford Taurus. They tracked down Kyle's mother Jo, hoping she would be able or willing to tell them where he was. Perhaps he was out looking as well, or maybe he'd gone to work. She was open and forthcoming, saying she hadn't actually spoken to her son in a week, and, as well as Erica, she was concerned for his safety too, given the stress he was under. And Kyle's boss confirmed that he hadn't been in work for a couple of days, which was unlike him. Law enforcement sources say they are also actively looking for Crosby. He may be in Erica's car, a cranberry red Ford Taurus with primer paint on the front passenger door and fender. Her family says the car had been parked outside her home Wednesday night when the police showed up to investigate. The car was right out front. I told the officer, I said, I have a bad feeling. Every time I go by this car, I have a bad feeling that she is in that trunk and y'all check it. Are we waiting on a search warrant? The car is now gone. Erica's family is convinced she was killed. When they went into the house Wednesday night, they found her coat, her pocketbook, and car keys. We did see rubber gloves inside the sink. The shower curtains tore down. There's no sheets on a bed. The house is tore up. The girl don't live like that. Erica's family says they will be organizing a search party tonight. In the meantime, the police are putting out a news release describing Erica's car, a missing red Ford Taurus with a multicolored door. If anybody sees that, the police want you to call them right away. One of Erica's aunts used the Find My app to see if she could get hold of Erica's last location, according to her phone. This led everyone to a restaurant, but after looking in the bins outside, and around the area, they determined that neither she nor her phone was there. Her cousin Barbara begged the manager to let them watch the CCTV, but there was no sign of Erica on any of the cameras. There was, however, some footage of Kyle, Kaylee and Amira from a few days before. The tapes were handed over to the detectives, who at this point were seeing red flags everywhere. They knew that Kyle had something to hide, he had been evasive from the start, and his story kept on changing. They also learned that Kyle was now out on a drug binge with a sex worker whom he had brought back to the couple's apartment. According to sources, he even told her she could go through Erica's wardrobe and take whatever she wanted. Erica and Kyle got married last summer. Her friends and family say they later found out he had just recently gotten out of jail. Court records show Crosby has a lengthy rap sheet for drug offenses and aggravated assault. Police didn't have enough to arrest him on suspicion of murder, but they did have enough to file charges against him for child endangerment. On January the 10th, 2015, Given the state of the apartment and the way the girls had seemingly been left to fend for themselves for eight days, a warrant was issued for his arrest. Fortunately for the team, Detective Rayner, who was heading the investigation, received an unexpected call. It was Kyle's father, and he said that his son had called them off of a random number that morning. He handed the number over, and this pointed police to a convenience store in Maryland. Using this location, they managed to get a hit on Erica's car license plate. It had been seen driving down the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Finally, they were narrowing in on Kyle Crosby. A bolo, otherwise known as a be on the lookout, was put out for the car. An off-duty police officer driving around Maryland soon spotted the car with Kyle driving it. He attempted to pull him over, but before he could do anything, 
Kyle jumped out of the car and ran off. After police caught up to him, he was officially charged with two counts of child endangerment. The husband of a missing Burlington County woman is in police custody and being questioned this morning. Kyle Crosby was taken into custody in Brooklawn, Camden County, near Route 130. This happened last night after police spotted his wife's car. NBC 10's Jesse Gary is live outside the Mount Laurel Police Station with more. Yeah, by Erica Crosby's family members were here at the police station during the overnight hours, but they have since gone home. Kyle Crosby is still being held here by police, but investigators won't say if he has been charged. Crosby was handed handcuffed and put in the back of a police car overnight in Brooklawn. This after he tried to run following police questioning about his wife's disappearance. Erica Crippen Crosby last seen late last month with her husband at a Cherry Hill restaurant. Her family says they found her coat, purse and keys inside her apartment. We going through my sister's stuff and we just find so much stuff that she didn't tell us. And it just hurts me because I can't hold my sister. I can't tell my sister I love her. They seized the Ford Taurus, and a forensic examination began on it. Police uncovered several items from inside that they believed had significant evidentiary value. Duct tape, a shovel, a bag of cement, and several used air freshener canisters. They now believed that they had enough circumstantial evidence to charge Kyle Crosby with the murder of his wife. He was held on a $1 million bond. Her family last night was relieved that Crosby had been taken into custody, but we're still looking for answers. I was glad that they got him. I just want him to come forward. I want him to come forward and tell who she is. I'm so glad that you guys got him. But they still didn't have Erica's body, and they had no idea where she might be. After looking in the glove box of the car, they found a GPS device, and the hope was, if this was plugged in, the data would be able to tell them where he went and when. The GPS device contained over 8,000 points over a few hundred miles. These points showed where the vehicle had come to a stop. Detective Rayner said it was essentially like digital breadcrumbs being dropped. They limited down the points to anywhere the vehicle had stopped for 10 minutes or longer, believing that if Kyle had moved and left Erica's body somewhere, it was likely it would have taken longer than a few minutes. Going through everything and eliminating certain points was a mammoth task, and while the team worked on this, Kyle's phone was also looked at. They found 15 messages between him and his mother Jo that had been deleted. Detective Rayner said the messages were disturbing, to say the least. On December 31st, the day police believed that something had happened to Erica, Kyle was actually texting his mother in real time, as a fight between the pair was going on. At 3.20am, a message from his mother read, Please do not touch her in any way or form. 13 minutes later, Kyle replied and said, I'm not that stupid. Four hours later, at around 7am, Joe's phone had pinged off of a tower near to the couple's apartment. Joe hadn't mentioned any of this to the police, and she was asked to come to the station and explain it. She bluntly told them if they checked her phone, they would find many more deleted messages between her and her son. She said she assumed they would have already found them and didn't feel the need to mention it. Police were convinced that she knew what had happened and was trying to help her son cover it up. of a South Jersey murder suspect has been charged with helping her son conceal his wife's body. 67-year-old Joe Crosby was arrested at her Sicklerville home this morning. She has been charged with hindering apprehension and tampering with physical evidence. Though Burlington County prosecutors wouldn't elaborate, they maintain Crosby helped her son hide his wife's remains. Police raided the parents' home of a South Jersey man who was charged with killing his still-missing wife. Police, along with the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office and Child Services, removed the couple's two-month-old from Kyle Crosby's parents' home in Gloucester Township late last night. They also removed bags of evidence. Police also searched the house and a backyard shed. Joe Crosby was also charged with tampering with evidence. She was held on a $12,500 bail, but posted 10% of it and was let out. 
well, it's been over a month now. Mm -hmm. We know she had a heart condition. So, you know, we can only expect the worst as our family. So what we um, want is her body. Just tell us where Erica is. We just want Erica's body. We know that he's committed a crime. Well, there's evidence, enough evidence to state that he has done that. And I just want him to tell us where she is. Neighbors said sometimes they heard a couple fight. She never shared that with us. She's always kept him positive. He was gone for five days and we verified by various surveillance and other means that he was as far away as Baltimore, Maryland and places in Delaware. Now, Erica's family says they are willing to forgive Crosby. They just want him to let them know where the body is, but law enforcement sources tell us he is not cooperating. Crosby is now being held on $1.2 million bail. The data on the GPS device was being looked at, alongside Google Maps and Street View, to see if any of the points looked like somewhere Kyle might have tried to hide Erica's body. One spot caught their attention right away. It was in the middle of Maryland, near a long country road. A quiet, rural area amidst a forest. Kyle's car had stopped there for five minutes one night, and then for 14 minutes a couple of nights later. Just a short walk away from the road the car had stopped on, Erica's body was found under some branches. She was wrapped in a blanket, her arms legs and neck were bound with electrical cord, and duct tape was across her mouth and nose. Although the cold weather had often hindered the search, police were now actually grateful for it. Despite detectives thinking she had likely been dead since New Year's Eve, her body was well preserved, as was any evidence around her, and this was all down to the freezing temperatures in the snow. My sister was a remarkable woman. She, she cared, she was a good mother, she was intelligent. In her heart, Janiya Crippen knew her sister was gone. Domestic violence also killed their mother years ago. She's just thankful her sister will get a proper burial. She always said that if God was ready to take me, he would take me. Unfortunately, it was like this. Well, her family can now get some type of closure as her body, which was found in Maryland, was transported up to New Jersey for a proper funeral. When tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far After a lengthy time for the family, just waiting for some sort of conclusion to the case, it was announced that Kyle Crosby would plead guilty. In December 2015, he pleaded guilty to aggravated manslaughter and hindering apprehension. As part of his plea deal, his mother's charges were dropped, as were the charges of child endangerment. A Mount Laurel man has been sentenced to 31 years in prison for killing his wife. 29-year-old Kyle Crosby pleaded guilty to strangling We're Erica Crippen on New Year's Eve last year. One day, you will find that your heart's forgiven. I ask God to forgive me. I'm sorry for my actions. I miss Erica, my wife. It's her. Kyle, to be honest, the choices that you made caused Erica's death, and you have taken someone so precious from us. But I will continuously raise Kaylee with the same love and passion that Erica would have raised her with. Crosby got 28 years for aggravated manslaughter and three years for hindering police. He has to serve 85% of that sentence. Detective Rayner said he wanted to believe Kyle's tears were genuine, but he couldn't help but think they were more for himself than anyone else. After he was sentenced, Erica's aunt Sonia said, We can finally move on. We can just be there picking up the pieces for the children. Today he really showed remorse. He did care for her. He did love her in some way. It's, God has a plan for, all, for us all. We don't know when we're going, when we know when we come in, we don't know when we leave. 
All I can say is I'm glad I have my family support and the love, and we will always remember Erica. Never heard him speak us. and say anything about her, you know, positive. And it, it was just awesome to be able to hear him say that. Yes. You know, we knew it the whole time. And what was it like seeing him break down and, and sob? I don't know if you guys could yeah, see him like, sobbing. I was, I was actually glad because that's the cow we know. Yeah. You know, the cow that we've been seeing here for the past year in courts has not, is not the cow we knew. Erica's cousin said the best thing anyone could do following this was maybe take something away from it. Be honest with their loved ones and let them help you, she said. There's signs in the beginning of relationships. Act on those signs and don't be afraid to leave, she said. Erica's oldest daughter, Amira, now lives with her father, Hermine, and Erica's aunt, Sonia, and uncle, Kanye, adopted Kaylee. Her aunt, Sonia, said that Erica told her that if anything were to happen to her, she wanted to be cremated and put into lockets so that her daughters could wear her close to their hearts. Erica's family never gave up and were relentless in their efforts to find Erica and the truth. Detective Rayner said, I've been a homicide detective for almost 10 years and it's rare that I've ever experienced a family as involved in looking for their missing loved one as Erica's family was. I have a lot of respect for them and I'll never forget that grit and that tenacity that they showed in trying to find Erica. Erica was a loving, hard-working mother, giving everything she could to her children, husband and family, dedicating so much to her dreams of one day being a doctor. Barbara said she feels like Erica is never far away, and that's thanks partly to how much her daughters are like her. She said, Amira remembers a lot. More and more, every day she's looking like her. She laughs like her. It's like having Erica back in the house. <laughs>